You have the scripture? This is John 8, 2 through 11. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Praise be to God. I think my mic's still on. Yes, I'm good. <laughs> Stones, rocks, they play a big part of the Bible. You may not think about them. But Cain killed Abel with a stone. Stones blocked the, the grave of Jesus and it was rolled away. Peter was going to be the rock that the church was built on. Why are rocks, little things that we take for granted, so important? Because rocks can build great things. They can build mountains. They can build buildings. They can build bridges. They can build statues. They can be carved into things of such beauty. But they can also be used for evil, for hate. Like I said, a stone killed Cain, or killed Abel. A stone. Man, just taking a stone and throwing it. And now we have Jesus here preaching at the temple. And here comes these men dragging this woman in and saying, we should stone her to death because she was caught committing adultery. Is that the reason why they brought her to Jesus? No, it was a trap. They were trying to use this to have some reason to accuse Jesus of doing something wrong. Not because they cared anything about this poor woman, but because they disagreed with Jesus Christ and what he was teaching. There's many problems with this. First off, yes, it was written in the law that a person like this should be stoned. But where's the man? The man should have been dragged just the same as she was. And to accuse somebody in this day and age, you had to have witnessed it happening. Where was the accuser? You just have somebody saying, hey, she was committing adultery. She should be stoned. What do you say? There's another issue here. Jesus was a teacher, but he was not one of the priests of the temple. And this should have been taken to them. Again, this was a trap to set Jesus up. Because they wanted to see that the person who loves sinners, how was he going to do this? Would he condemn them? and prove that he wasn't this great champion of the sinner? Or would he say, yes, let's do it. Let's, we should stone her because she was committing adultery. 
But what did Jesus do? He stooped down and started writing on the ground. Now the Bible doesn't tell us what he was writing. He could have been writing anything. He could have been doodling for all we know. What was he doing? Was he stalling for time? Trying to come up with a great answer? No. He was trying to let it sink into these people what they were doing. And then he blew all their minds with one quick answer. Let him with no sin cast the first stone. I'm going to tell you right now, I know I am a sinner. I have no doubt about it in my mind whatsoever. I have sinned and I am not worthy of the life I have been given. Even the Bible tells us in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no possible way we will ever be good enough to earn our place in heaven. I can't throw stones. Jesus Christ, the only man who has ever lived on this earth, who has lived a life without sin, has that right. 1 John 3, verse 5, But you know that He appeared so that He might take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. Can you imagine living a life without sin? Keeping all the commandments, keeping all the laws of Moses, keeping the, all the laws that the Israel, Israeli people came up with to guide their lives. Because at that time, they didn't have the Savior. I probably break several of the laws every day. I tell little white lies. I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't. But it happens. My life before I came to this church, there's some things in my life I would rather forget. Because I know that I would not really be happy knowing that God was looking down on me. But you know what? To him it didn't matter. What did he say to the woman? There's no one here to condemn you. And neither will I. Jesus Christ, the one without sin, the one that could have picked up that stone and thrown it, said no. He knew why he was there. He told her, go and sin no more. Did he say no, she didn't do anything? No. He knew she was a sinner. He knew she had fallen short of the glory of God. But he still loved her. He still wanted what was best for her. He wanted her to be able to make that decision to come to him. Now let me ask you this question. Do you have the right to throw that first stone? Think about the men who were standing there. And when Jesus said that, was the older ones who left first. Okay, there's a couple of reasons I can think about why it was probably the older people first. They've had longer in their life to realize, yeah, I'm a sinner. I have done things that I shouldn't have. And I probably did some things that were worse than what she did. But it took some time for the younger ones to start doing that. Because when you're young, you feel like you can do no wrong. You feel like it. you don't have a reason to be upset and that you have a right to express your opinion the way you think it should be expressed. But Jesus said, no one is without sin. Man. God really put us between that rock and a hot place, didn't he? The rock that can be used for great wonders or can be used for great evils. Jesus used to teach a lesson. 
How can we go out and tell the world of the great love of Jesus Christ in one sentence? Let he without sin cast the first stone. And then he didn't. Think about it. We are given so many opportunities every day to be the light that Jesus asks us to be. We go out in the world, we see people who are suffering. We see people who are in the midst of sin. We see people who are different from us. And we think we have the right to tell them how to live their life, how to do this, how to do that, and how to do everything else. Yeah, we do in a way. We need to be that person that goes out there and says, hey, there is another way. But if they don't want to listen, we should be the beacon of light, not the harbinger of death. Jesus asked us to go and feed his sheep, not stone them to death. We are supposed to be the people that prove that God is love. There are so many ways that we can do that. We can feed people. We can clothe the homeless. We can be there and be that person that It's ready to have a shoulder for somebody to cry on. We can be that hand of solace when somebody dies. Or we can be silent. Because in silence, sometimes is the greatest gift of all. Yes, go out and tell people about Jesus Christ. But do it with love. Because that's what he did. When he told that woman, go and sin no more, he knew she would still sin and fall short. But he wanted her to live her life to the fullest and to tell others what he had done. Can you imagine the day that we meet our maker and we're standing in front of heaven and we're standing in front of this big, thick book and they're reading off every one of your sins. We're going to feel so unworthy. We're going to believe we don't have any right to be there. And then one drop of blood is going to hit that book and it will be completely erased. Because what Jesus is going to throw is not stones. It's his love through the crucifixion. His death was a stoning that we should have got. His death took away our sin. And his death brought us closer to God. Do you feel worthy of that? I don't. Like I said, beginning, I know I'm a sinner. I know I messed up. I know I do it all the time. And I'm standing up here in front of you trying to convince you that you shouldn't do it. That's impossible. I can't convince you of anything. But I can tell you what Jesus said. I can tell you what he did. And I can tell you that if he lived in this world right now and came through that door, how many people would actually look at him and say, Hi, how are you? And how many people would look at him and judge him by what he was wearing, by the color of his skin, by how much money he makes, or who his friends were? I hope none of the people in this room would do that. Don't throw stones. 
Because I will say right now, I am not enjoying the Texas heat right now at all. But I know there's a place that's a lot hotter than this, and I really don't want to be there. I don't want to spend eternity in a place that is hotter than Texas is right now. I would like to go to a place that's going to be very moderately tempered, with all my loved ones standing there waiting for me, and Jesus Christ standing there with his hands outstretched and telling me, welcome home. He's not going to tell me, you fell short. He's going to say, you believed, and you fed my sheep. Would you all pray with me? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, I can't think of anything more to say that can express your love for us. You sent Jesus to live that sinless life, to be the one who could throw the stone, but chose not to. His gift to us, we can never repay. We can try to make sure we make sure that as many people as possible know of that love. Your amazing love that will always be there no matter what we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.